I think Coots thought I would just slink away. I'd be too embarrassed to say in public that an account had been closed on me, but no, I'm going to stand up and fight this and fight it all the way. If they can cancel me, they can cancel you. Uh, no other UK bank will have me. I've had 10 rejections. The, it should be a basic right that everybody in this country can have a bank account. Right, I'm here with Nigel Farage, the man at the uh, centre of the latest political intrigue. And Nigel, who would have thought a Coots account would cause so much trouble? Yeah, well, of course, it's just I'm just a symptom, really, of a much bigger problem. Um, accounts have been closed in their thousands over the last few years for a variety of reasons. Uh, politically exposed people, there's an increased compliance cost to the bank, and we've broadened the definition from African dictators, not just to British MPs, but even to their grandchildren, their parents, their families. So that's one issue that's been bubbling away. Uh, the other is... Uh, you know, the vicar, for example, up in Yorkshire, who goes to his building society and sees that it's become an advert for Pride Month and just says, hey, guys, all I want to do is use you as a building society. They close his account. Right through to the thousands of businesses this year that have had their accounts closed because they're paying in cash. And the banks would rather people didn't use cash, again, because of anti-money laundering laws, bad regulation, over-enforced in this country. So I'm the latest symptom of bank accounts being closed. The difference is I'm the highest profile person that it's yet happened to, point one. And point two, you know, I think Coots thought I would just slink away. I'd be too embarrassed to say in public that an account had been closed on me. But no, I'm going to stand up and fight this and fight it all the way. Yes, they definitely picked the wrong person there, didn't they? <laughs> and could you talk us through exactly how it occurred there and what was the process mm. with Coots? Did they tell you anything about what was going to happen with your account? I joined NatWest in 1980 with a personal account. I opened a business account in 1993. I operated that for nine years when I had a small brokerage business in the city. Um, so I've been with the bank for 43 years. I switched from NatWest to Coots 10 years ago because they closed my foreign exchange facilities. And at the time, I was being paid in euros as an MEP, so it rather suited me to have more than one currency account. I've been with Coots for 10 years. There have been no problems, um, no issues of any kind at all. I took out a mortgage with them in 2017, uh, which I paid off just a few months ago, um, ahead of time. Uh, no issues at all. Uh, but it seems that since Brexit happened is when the issues have occurred. Um, and I got a phone call out of the blue from a new personal manager who'd been appointed to me but never spoken to me, just to say, we are closing your accounts. So well, hang on. You know, I've been with this group for over four decades. I've done nothing wrong. What's the reason? No reason given. Uh, we're going to write a letter to you, it'll all be explained. The letter came. No explanation whatsoever, just we're closing your accounts. Here's the date, you must get out by. And as I say, I've been hearing this story from so many other people, I thought, right, I'm going to start kicking up a fuss. So I wrote to the chairman of the bank, who whilst he didn't reply, did get a senior figure from Coote's private team to ring me up. Um, and I've been speaking to them now for a couple of months. Um, I've explained to them that getting other bank accounts in the UK is going to be very difficult because of PEP status. Um, and, and this has gone on and on and on. And I just reached the point. I just reached the point, you know, where I felt, frankly, they were being so condescending to me. And by the time I started to talk about it gently in public, suddenly I'm bombarded by people from all over the country who've had their accounts closed. Many people living in fear. Because don't forget, without a bank account, you're a non-person. You can't exist in an increasingly digitised age. How do you pay the gas bill? You know, all of those questions. And so I said at 7 o'clock on Thursday, that's two weeks ago, I'm going to go public on GB News and blow me down at 5 to 7 if the phone doesn't ring. And it's coots. Oh, hello. We can offer you a personal account with NatWest Bank, i.e. from whence I came. I said, well, that's good. Thank you. Uh, what about the business account? What about how I earn my living? Oh, we haven't got a solution to that yet. So it's not really much use, is it? Um, then I came out and I told my story. And then they decided they'd brief the BBC. They'd brief the BBC. They'd brief the Financial Times that the reason that I was closed out was because I had insufficient funds. And I'd been offered an account anyway with NatWest, so what was the problem? That was the spin <coughs> they put out. Um, and a friend said to me, look, you know, I've been having terrible trouble with banks. If you go for subject access requests, which, by the way, folks, you can do for free. If you're worried about your bank, put them in. And that was to give me full personal data. And it's all come out. It's far worse than I thought. I thought it was going to be around 
my politically exposed person status, but what I found actually, no, it's all around my views, my unacceptable views. Uh, I mean, do you realise I have questioned our membership of the European Convention on Human Rights? Worse still, I know the Djokovic family. I mean, strike me down. How bad a human being can I possibly be? I know Donald Trump. I mean, at this point, you know, the garlic's coming out. Um, I, I Literally, it's like a charge sheet of all the things that the upper middle class, double barreled name types at Coots in their metropolitan bubble find completely unacceptable. And they conclude at that meeting on the 17th of November, 2022, that I do not align with the bank's values. I don't fit their diversity and inclusion agenda. And for that reason, I am to be canceled in 2023 when the mortgage is repaid. And here's the key. On the day that decision was made, they said I was a financially viable client. And therefore, what's been briefed to the BBC and the FT and published by them is just an outright lie. Mm. We'll come back to the BBC in a minute. But uh, do you think um, the way that they've handled it, is it, is it a business thing that they're trying to do? And why are they taking these views on kind of such controversy? <clears throat> well, that's a really good question. You know, how is it that through both the public and private sector, under 13 years of Conservative government, everything has shifted so far to the left? How is it that Stonewall now have this incredible influence over the employment policies of companies? And in this particular case, I mean, don't forget, I mean, Coots is a small part of a much bigger bank. It's part of the RBS group, which includes NatWest. NatWest have 19 million customers. A lot of your readers, a lot of your watchers, are NatWest customers. And they put a new chief executive in a couple of years ago, Alison Rose, who was you know, said to be the queen of woke, who has utterly changed the corporate culture within the bank. And so NatWest and Coots now, whilst they're banks and businesses, they're also you know, basically campaigners for social change. They are overtly political now in everything that they do. And my real message to people is, if they can cancel me, they can cancel you. Because now the international credit rating agencies, there's a firm called Refinitiv, and, and every one of us is somewhere on Refinitiv, and 49 of the top 50 banks in the world go there to check. Say you want to open an account. They'll go to Refinitiv to check, you know, did you leave massive debts in Kuala Lumpur in a, you know, in a previous decade, or whatever it may be. They now have the ability to social media search what every one of us is saying on Facebook or on Twitter. So, it's, it, you know, it starts with me, being cancelled for political reasons. There have been others in the past that it's happened to. My worry is this spreads into a much bigger phenomenon. And we almost finish up like China with a social credit system where unless you have acceptable views, you can't fully participate in society. It strikes me that if you were so sexful, successful with the, um, the subject access request that actually all these people are being targeted for kind of cancellation, you could easily swamp banks by people just thinking about <coughs> what you knowing that this is possible. But well, I'll be honest with you, three months ago, I didn't even know subject access request existed. I didn't know. But now I do know, let's tell other people, if they're getting aggro from their bank, they're having their overdraft limits cut, they're being denied mortgages, whatever it is, put one of these in and find out what they're saying about you. Um, it was very interesting today that David Davis, uh, the Conservative veteran, got up in the House of Commons and said, you know, can we please see across all the banks people that have been closed out in the past for reasons of their views or political connections. And this has been going on for years. Back in, well, probably 15 years ago now, the membership list for the British National Party was leaked. And I know that two of our leading banks literally closed down the accounts of everybody whose name was on that list. And this is not about whether you deplore the BNP or whether you deplore the Corbynistas. Surely it should be a right for people, provided they live and behave within the law, to have normal banking facilities. So it's been going on for a long, long time. No one's blown the whistle until now. Uh, but I think we're going to have a proper debate. And one thing I'm thrilled by, I'm actually thrilled by the response that I've got from cabinet ministers like Grant Shapps, from the city minister, Andrew Griffith, who's personally been in touch with me to assure me they're going to have a look at the law. Even the prime minister today, Rishi Sunak, has said nobody 
you know, for having legal opinions, should be closed out of anything. And these are people you've had run-ins with in the past. Be my enemies for, yes. be my yes. enemies for a quarter of a century. And yet, but suddenly, here's an issue uh, that is not about left or right. It's not about whether you're pro or anti-EU or any of these things. You know, you know, the, the, these, the, it should be a basic right that everybody in this country can have a bank account, can set up their own business account. We used to have those rights until the post office was privatized just a few years ago. That right has gone. It certainly exists today in France, in Germany, and comparable countries. So, so this isn't just about me. This isn't just me chucking toys out of the pram in anger and vengeance. This is me actually launching a campaign that says we need revision of legislation around banking regulation and, and a really deep look into how the banks are behaving. Let's remember this. Last year, these same banks that taxpayers bailed out with tax increases to pay for it back in 2008 because of the greed and stupidity of these banks, these same banks now treat us, me, small businessmen and women, with total contempt. Can't be allowed to go on like this. They made £35 billion last year. £35 billion. Everyone protests at BP's profits or Shell's profits, but well, what about the banks? Do you have confidence that it will change? And do you think it's something that the government's going to stick know, to? Or? Do you know, I, nearly always, you know, I mean, there was, there was an announcement at the weekend that the Tories are considering cutting inheritance tax. I mean, yawn, yawn. I've heard that a hundred times over the last 20 years from them. And of course, I know they'll do nothing. I actually think this will have an impact because, you know why? The politically exposed persons rule which has come from an EU directive, which now we've voted for Brexit can be amended easily, it's coming to affect them. And when it starts to affect them in Westminster, I mean, cynically, I think they're more likely to act. Yeah, no, I think this is a very, very big debate on a whole, on a whole um, raft of levels. Uh, and I, do you know what, for once, I'm confident the government will act. Yeah, mm. I am. I think that we're coming to the end, but have you heard um, from Coots? Have they offered... Anything? Are they trying to wriggle out of it at this point? They or? did offer me that current account, albeit in verbally, not in writing. It's never been confirmed. They've never offered a business account. Um, I, they've been in existence for 327 years. I think I may have given them their worst fortnight in that 327-year period. They're not quite sure what to do, but I think there's now a bigger debate, not about Coots, but about NatWest. Mm -hmm. There are 19 million people aligned to a bank who now are more like a political party. So, uh, no, I've been offered nothing. Uh, no other UK bank will have me. I've had 10 rejections. So I mean, you're I, you banking know, with the US bank now. You know, well, I'm not sure what to do. Either I go for an overseas Has Donald given you some advice? <laughs> well, he knows a lot about this stuff. Uh, he's one of the reasons I've been cancelled, of course. I'm friendly with Trump. Uh, I think Trump's mentioned 39 times uh, in the paper. Uh, Brexit's mentioned 86 times in the paper. And disgracefully, Russia's mentioned 144 times in the paper, as if somehow I'm working for the Kremlin. It's all, you know, complete and utter baloney. Uh, mercifully, in the 21st century, there are now some small fintech companies around uh, who can offer you means by which you can receive money and pay money out. It's not a bank account. You can't earn interest. You can't borrow money. You can't get a mortgage. Uh, I think direct debits with, the, with um, you know, your electricity provider might be quite awkward, uh, but at least it gives me a, a, a 21st century technical means of survival. It's not the same as a bank account, uh, but uh, I'll manage. I'm, I'm not leaving yet. <laughs> I'm sure you'll still be in demand regardless of whether <laughs> NetWest brings you back on board. Thank you very much, Thank Nigel. You. Thank you.